Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Continuing with the general toxicology, this is the tenth lecture, and in this lecture, I'll be discussing the removal of absorbed poisons from the body. In the previous lecture, I discussed the removal of unabsorbed, but in this, we'll discuss the absorbed poisons. Removal of absorbed. There are certain methods which are used when the poison has already been absorbed. or sometime the intervention is delayed then to get rid of the absorbed poison the certain processes or uh, methods are used for example forced diuresis that is uh, the urination is uh, increased by certain medication and the poison uh, is excreted through the urine so the forced diuresis then dialysis whether it is done uh, the peritoneal dialysis or the hemodialysis and these this is also a very effective method to get rid of the absorbed poison then hemoperfusion we perfuse the blood with certain uh, ingredients and get rid of then plasma exchange and exchange transfusion in plasma exchange we only exchange the plasma but exchange transfusion the whole blood is exchanged so the first method the forced diuresis this is based on increasing the volume of the flow of urine through the kidneys that is certain drugs and certain uh, medicines are giving which increases the excretion of urine through the kidney and when the excretion is increased the drug which has been absorbed is uh, washed away with the urine for example uh, manitol is given manitol performs the forced diuresis then furosemide this is a drug which is in which increases the excretion of urine and the main objective is to uh, maintain 300 to 400 uh, ml of urine output per hour so this is the uh, pace at which the urination is uh, increased that 300 to 4 ml of urine per hour that is the forced diuresis the limitation of this procedure is that the chemicals Uh, not absorbed will not be excreted that is only those which have been absorbed in the blood they can be forced out through the urine and those which have not been absorbed they will not be excreted and this is not presumed as a good method for protein bound drugs because the protein bound drugs they are adherent to the uh, proteins circulating in the blood and they will not be excreted and this is also uh, not used when there is some renal disease some renal insufficiency or renal problem then this method is not used the precaution in this technique is that uh, uh, first assess the renal functions acid base uh, uh, balance should be maintained and the cardiopulmonary status should be assessed so uh, continuing with the post diuresis do also have to assess the renal function the electrolyte acid base balance the cardiopulmonary status and the central venous pressure so these are the precautions which have to be maintained during the procedure then sometime the alkaline diuresis is done and this is specially done when the poisoning is with salicylates barbiturates or alcohol and the acid diuresis is done in amphetamines and strychnine so two types of diuresis that is alkaline and acid so both the procedure in different poisons they are different the complication of this procedure is that uh, uh, there can be fluid and electrolyte balance imbalance dehydration uh, renal 
shutdown or the complications for the renal functions, water intoxication can take place, and cerebral and pulmonary edema. Now about the peritoneal dialysis. The mechanism of action of this procedure is that uh, the, uh, we know that the, there is a concentration gradient of drug on the both sides of the cellophane membrane and it drives the drug to move from the blood to the dialysis solution and the blood is cleared off from that drug. So uh, this membrane, across the membrane there is higher concentration of the uh, drug in the blood and it moves from blood to the uh, solution, to the dialysis solution and hence it passes away. And this procedure is uh, based on the principle that uh, of osmosis and diffusion because the higher concentration there will be diffusion from higher concentration to lower concentration and osmosis is the penetration through the membrane. And this is especially used for the re removal of salicylate poison poisoning in children. Now about hemodialysis, its mechanism of action is that the concentration gradient of the drug on the both sides of cell membrane in this also drives the drug to move from the blood to the dialysis solution and the blood is cleared off from the body. So the principle is same but here in peritoneal dialysis the peritoneum acts as a uh, mem diffusion membrane but in this the blood is passed to the dialysis machine and that machine acts as a uh, cellophane membrane and that uh, helps in transfusion the from drug into the dialysis solution. So this procedure also involves the cellophane bag or the artificial kidney. The blood passes through the dialysis machine and by passing through the blood one catheter is attached with the machine and the other is attached with the uh, patient and the blood circulates from the through the dialysis machine and across the cellophane membrane, cellophane bag which acts as the artificial kidney, the drug is transfused or filtered or moved from the higher concentration to lower concentration and it gets rid of from the body. And this procedure is less effective for again for protein bound. When the drug is bound with the protein, it will not detach and it will not pass away. Now the hemoperfusion. The drugs which are protein bound, they adsorb to the activated charcoal can also be removed by this procedure. So the drugs which are uh, protein bound, the other procedure is that with the help of activated charcoal they can be removed and this procedure involves the exchange principle. For example, the barbiturates, the sedatives and the hypnotics, they can get rid of by this hemoperfusion method. Then the plasma exchange, this is suitable also for the protein bound drugs. The volume of blood from the patient is removed and the blood is exchanged. Basically in this only the plasma is exchanged, plasma exchange. Then the antidotes. An antidote is a substance which can counteract or neutralize the effect of the poison without causing harm to the body. And it is especially when the poison is ingested. The indication of this procedure is that they are given in the poison which may not have been completely removed by emesis or by gastric wash. That is the poison is still in the stomach or these procedures are also contraindicated 
when the poison has already absorbed. Poison administered by other roots than per oral. So this uh, procedure is adopted in such situations when other procedures are contraindicated, poison has already been absorbed and the poison administered by other root, then this is contraindicated. Now certain groups of antidotes which are used. Major, there are mainly four groups of antidotes, mechanical or the physical antidote, the chemical antidote, the physiological antidotes and pharmacological or receptor antidotes. There are other two groups, they are the dispositional antidotes and universal antidote. So this is all about the uh, lecture for the poison which has already been absorbed, the procedures which are acted to get rid of this poison. We will continue the toxicology in the next lecture. Take care. Allah.